everybody, this is Tony. And this is Paul. We're coming at you from the Friends for Life podcast, where we discuss the ongoing lives and issues of people with developmental disabilities to spark positive change in the field. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Making sure that individuals are reaching the goals they have set for themselves. That's one of the many goals of Assured Health Services. If you're looking for a residential care provider or searching for ADS services, Assured Health is your go-to place. Assured Health, helping others succeed. Learn more at assuredhealthohio.com or call 419-442-8066. Critty, welcome to the Friends for Life podcast. Thanks for having and me. We are very excited to have you because we like to learn about housing and especially with people with disabilities. It's a pretty big issue that a lot of people aren't aware of. Mm-hmm. And so before we get into the, the heavy stuff about housing and how people can get, you know, better housing, more affordable housing. How did you get involved in working with Creative Housing? Because getting involved in the IDD world is always an interesting story. (laughs) Well, mine is interesting, actually. I landed here in Columbus from Cleveland Mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I had an aunt who had a stroke, and we moved her down here between my cousin and myself. We figured she'd have a little more attention, care, visitors, and all that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff. So there's family. And then um, I was actually brought on to Creative. The timing was great to be kind of their in-house expert on new development. Okay. So they got some HUD 811 grants, and they were going to continue to pursue these grants. And I have architectural background and other kind of expertise that rather than pay a consultant or whatnot, then we could do everything, handle everything in-house. So I actually came here for a short stint. I thought it was going to be a temporary gig. Mm Um, never knew this an organization like this existed. Never knew about the industry, for mm-hmm. lack of a better word. And, you know, just the rewarding aspect of doing what I do to help people. Mm-hmm. Just, I here I am 17 years later. Next month, it'll be 17 years. Nice. So, yeah. I was, in my architectural background, I was doing a lot of track homes and high-end homes. I had clients who would fly to France to get leather for their ceiling. Oh, my and goodness. Right? And so, again, the whole th- being able to use my talents to help people mm-hmm. was very, very, very good for me. Well, that's a running so. trend that we've found in a lot of our guests have either started in the field and worked here for a very long time or they've come from a like a very corporate almost unfulfilling job and they wanted to like make an impact on people's lives. Yeah. And that's kind of where mm-hmm. I came in too. I mean, I did not ever think working in video and cameras was going to lead to me doing this job. But here I am. <laughs> and it's that's one of the cool things about this field is is people don't look at it generally, they look at it as almost like a quasi healthcare field. Yeah. There's every opportunity in the IDD field for every job that exists, mm-hmm. but the bonus effect is that you're helping people lead better lives. Like, yes. I don't think you can ever go wrong with that. Yeah. No. Now, I, I do want to say that my past career was rewarding just in a different way. Yeah. Right? I mean, I was still doing housing for folks. Mm-hmm. You know, I was still, for myself, I was I was designing really cool things and working with really good people. So I don't want to, I don't want to fall back on that corporate unfulfilling life. Mine was. <laughs> my past career sucked. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, glad you landed here. Yeah, me too. So creative housing, from what we've been told, you guys are doing amazing things for people with disabilities, people like seniors, people in an elderly, and making housing more you know accessible, affordable, things like that. And what, how do you go about that? Because, I mean, I'm even trying to buy a house right now, and it is hard. Yeah. It is very difficult. The pricing is just out of this world. Um, and I can't, people with disabilities and stuff, I can't, it's, you know, a lot of time they're not making as much money or, right. or doing that. So how do you, how do you go about this process? Because it seems like something very needed right now. Yes. So we need to go to the way back machine. Mm-hmm. And when we're speaking again of, of the IDD world that we all live in, um, it's, it's a very blessed place because of all the services and you know the care that the state gives, that the county gives mm-hmm. for all the folks it serves. Um, Creative Housing was founded in 1991 as its housing partner. And so we, we provide housing solely for folks that receive services from Franklin County Board of Developmental okay. Disabilities, right? So um, we have that piece of the puzzle. And then we also provide rent subsidies for folks to live in the private market. So we own houses, we provide a subsidy, and then the the last piece that you mentioned is we do accessibility renovations. Mm -hmm. 
So for folks that either have waivers or private pay folks, um, we work with a lot of people at Ohio State. There's a lot of people with um, spinal cord injury, mm -hmm. that whole group that you know we help educate on what to look for in accessibility renovations. Um, so yeah, we started in 1993. At the end of that year, we had 57 houses. And currently, 30 years later, we have 570 mailboxes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so when you talk about how it's difficult for folks with in general, plus with disabilities and low income, to find affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Again, we live in a magical pocket mm -hmm. where there are funds available through both the state, through DODD, and through the county board. Okay. And we've also partnered with Columbus Metropolitan Housing Authority, so we have some vouchers. I know that you've probably heard of a lot of people on wait lists to get those vouchers. Yes. Um, so, so. I can't necessarily offer how does everyone in general with disabilities find better affordable housing, mm -hmm. but I can speak to our, our little pocket. And there are housing corporations like ours all through the state. Um, so there's you know, Cuyahoga County and up in that area, they serve multiple counties. And then there's a big one down in Hamilton and Butler County. And then Montgomery County is kind of the next biggest. So I think we're the biggest in the state. Um, I don't have it confirmed, but I think we have we provide a third of the housing for folks with IDD wow. in the state. Wow. Um, and we're since we're county driven, um, as opposed to a lot of the other states that is state programs, health and human services. We actually, and again, is unproven. And I'm hoping to find a way to prove it that we might be the largest IDD housing provider, sole provider in this in the country. That's so. That's impressive. Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> How do you qualify someone for uh, for, our for this? Yes. Yep. Well, like, how does that happen? So all our referrals do come from Franklin County Board. Mm -hmm. So if you're receiving services, you need to talk to your SSA and or service coordinator. They're called both, mm -hmm. and they will kind of take a look at okay, what do you want? You know, why? what area, town do you want to live in? I mean, there's the basically the qualifier for our housing is that you're being served by the county board okay. and that you have a waiver, right? Um, and typically it's an IO waiver. Mm. So um, our housing tends to, the properties that we own tend to service some of the folks that, that might need a little more support. Gotcha. And a lot of the folks that can live more independently receive the rent subsidy and they're out in the private market in the apartments with all that fun stuff, mm -hmm. the pools and the workout rooms and all that That's kind nice. of good stuff. So, so yeah, it's a pretty simple way to qualify. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you know, there's the whole piece, the complicated piece that the county works with is, you know, those services. How are we going to support somebody in the community so that they can live their best life? And, and together... Um, you know, between we always talk about the three-legged stool, so it mm -hmm. it takes that you know eligibility piece also requires that you have a provider you're working with, right? Gotcha. So the three-legged stool between the Franklin County Board, your provider, and Creative Housing. You know, as long as we're all carrying our weight, then we can support that individual to be stable and steady in the community. Is it? Do you? Uh, buy houses and renovate? Do you build new houses? How do you go about, I mean, expanding? I mean, there's always going to be need for housing and yes. you always need more uh, yes. generally. So how do you go about that? What do you guys do in that avenue? So we we do buy and renovate. Um, when Right now, DODD has what they call their CCA funds mm -hmm. that will support housing corporations to do that across okay. the state. Um, and then we also, we have done new builds and we've done, I think I mentioned, we received $7.1 million from HUD to do new builds. We're all, always looking for opportunities and partners to do that. The, getting funding for that can be a little tricky um, because our developments are small, mm -hmm. right? Um, a lot of the tax credits and all those other programs out there are for like the larger developments mm -hmm. and, and not necessarily focused on the IDD groups. So the other piece that we're doing is um, partnering with developers, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So instead of us having to put that capital out to build units, if we partner with developers who you know will agree to take our rent subsidy okay. um, and potentially hold a couple units, accessible units for us, then that's, that's a great way to expand our portfolio per se. Right. 
So they're building an apartment building, and you're just setting aside, like, hey, build five apartments with accessibility yeah. stuff. Well, typically they, they, they do already do some with accessibility, so it's just a matter of, you know, will you accept our subsidy and, mm-hmm. and allow us to have a couple of those units? So, yeah. And then, of course, you know, we can't hold them into perpetuity. It's mm-hmm. when, they, when they open up, we might be able to move some folks in, and if they move, somebody else might come in. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And then, you know, currently right now, like, we're, we're, we, have, we have an angel architect um, who is connected here in the city of Columbus. Mm-hmm. And so he's trying to help us make connections with more developers and as well as get some funding from the city and you know get some lots possibly from the land bank, that kind of stuff. So it's kind of all over the place yeah. where, is you, where, where you can find the help when you can find the money is where you go. <laughs> There's something I've always wondered um, because a lot of our population, they're on fixed incomes. Um, mm-hmm. And so I'm sure getting a loan to purchase their own home is very tough. Is there any headway moving so more individuals can own their own home and have a, a at least a, a blueprint on you know what steps are needed? Yeah, so we don't get too involved with home <coughs> ownership because unfortunately um, it is possible, but it's as far as securing loans and all that kind of th- stuff. I don't know of an avenue. Um, specific that would help, but a lot of families like want to leave their homes to their adult children so that they have a place forever, and and the complication is you have to do things with trusts. Yeah, and um, otherwise your assets are going to kick you out of yeah. certain things. Mm-hmm. So that's you know as far as the a. a easy normal route of how do I get a loan and go buy a house that I want that's I don't I can't speak to that unfortunately gotcha. but there there are avenues and there's some really good special needs attorneys out there um, so there's resources the reliable drug and alcohol testing clinic is a leading provider and convenient source of pre-employment and occupational type testing their clinic provides services to a wide range of private businesses, healthcare facilities, and municipal and county courts. Reliable is an independent, locally owned clinic. As a result, they provide their services at a lower cost than the major hospitals, have faster turnaround times on test results, and eliminate the long waits typically incurred at these larger facilities. To learn more, visit ReliableDrugTest.com. What are uh, some of the more you know, cool innovations that you're doing in houses. I mean, I know there's a lot of accessibility stuff that's probably very helpful, just generic stuff like ramps and then things of that nature. But is there anything that you're kind of like, I'm really excited about this technology coming out and that we're definitely putting in homes? Yeah. So we're, we actually started putting technology in our homes 15 years ago, um, nice. before everything all started, we were actually part of the, the pilot for the technology first, Thanks. remote supports. Nice, um, awesome. As much as we love that, we don't get as involved anymore because remote supports and assistive tech is, is the whole thing through waiver providers. Right. Um, but we are seeing some really cool things out there as far as just allowing folks to live more independently. And it's... The crazy thing is not really as innovative as there's a product out there that people just really didn't think mm-hmm. of using, yeah. and it's being used. Um, back in the day before remote supports, we we did things like um, if somebody had a an assistance animal that we would put fob long distance fob readers on buildings and the dog would carry the fob mm-hmm. and you know that kind of thing um, you know then the old school stuff uh, for canines and when you when you talk about the innovations that we do we do really cool stuff like one of our houses has its toilet seat is at floor level and the toilet's hanging below because the gentleman who lives there he's in a chair out in public and he prefers to crawl mm-hmm. so like anything person-centered, physically able to be done in a house, we are we are always willing to, uh, let's take a look at it and see if we can do it type of stuff. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, technology is such a useful tool, and I think even like pre, 
the pandemic stuff when we started this podcast, even yeah. when we were talking about remote supports was like a dirty word for a long time. People were <laughs> oh, terrified. Man. And we yeah. had so many episodes just like with with tech providers talking about we're not spying on you. We're not trying to control what you do. We're here to make you more independent and allow you to do mm-hmm. what you want more. So right. do you think, have you kind of seen people less hesitant about that nowadays since, you know, this whole thing we went through the last couple of years kind of changed, upended life as we know yeah. it? <laughs> a little more. Um, we're still, you know, we still have a lot of folks who are used to that person. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and a lot of, it's, it's, I, it seems generational. Yeah. As well, right? So how can how can a machine be better than a person mm-hmm. um, being there? You know, we always try to sell the fact that if you have a seizure mat in a bed, you're going to know when someone has a seizure as opposed to somebody sleeping on the sofa. So that's yeah, true. like how would they know? Very much um, so. type of thing. So, but we are seeing a, a definite better comfort level. Um, we actually through a grant from DODD, we're promoting um, broadband for folks with remote supports. Oh, nice. So I think that kind of kicked things in gear a little bit here at Franklin County. They did a great job of, you know, educating all the SSAs and, you know, educating the providers as well. It was the providers. It was a fear of they're going to take our jobs, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it ramp up, and I, I, I mean, you just know it's going to. Yeah, I don't think there's any other option at this point. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, people are not... Um, um, uh, what, 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 uh, they're, they're not being made the way that they used to, <laughs> for yeah. lack of a better way to say it. Yeah, yeah. There's a different. It's a. It's it's not as much a calling to the service as yes. it was mm-hmm. back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a job. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. So. I just found. I think we've all gotten to this point where we're very comfortable with technology. As a society, I mean, we're all on our phone. Try and find someone who's not on their phone 24-7, you know? It's just part of our daily life now, and, I mean, it's only going to grow as time goes on. And I think the, even, like, from from some of the houses that we've talked to people about, you know, some of the the cool new tech houses and stuff, like you said, a lot of technology is mind-blowing stuff, like robotic arms, putting hats on people and stuff. It's really, really simple technology that we all take for granted. Yes. Like a Google Home or, a, or yeah. Alexa being able to send a text or something or simple things like that. And I think that's just something that is really cool that we don't think about. Because a lot of people use that technology to be lazier. Yeah. In, the, in, the, <laughs> in this space, people are using this technology. It's life-changing because they, yep. they can literally do anything they want with voice access or, you know, touch command or something like that with the stuff. So I, I think that's really cool. And... At the end end of the day, I don't know about you, but our our goal is to allow people to be more independent. Mm-hmm. I think that's a lot of a lot of people view people individuals with disabilities as almost like grown children, whereas a lot of people want to be independent. Like I don't want people telling me what to do all day and being around me twenty four seven. You go right. insane, I'd go insane, and right. that's 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 like anything to help someone be independent is a huge bonus. Oh yeah, yeah. And, you know, historically, we've been a very protective industry. And Mm -hmm. so when you mention, you know, like adult children, yeah, and, and, you know, you can watch technology shift that mindset Mm -hmm. of, you know, oh, well, they can go do that, right? So the one thing I do want to mention about remote supports technology in houses is um, I know that in our homes, the remote supports vendors are great at Mm -hmm. coordinating with us. you know, the, there are times that some people don't know necessarily that depending on what you're putting in place, you should get permission from the landlord type of thing. Um, I know that our, our keying system is, is a bit complex, and they there's quite a few people that want um, digital entry locks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But the systems out there won't take our key, our type of key. So, you know, like I said, we're as long as, you know, you're coordinating with your landlords, then then it's easy peasy. Mm. But how is that with the landlords? Do you guys get pushback or are there any type of um, like bad stories? Like, hey, we tried to come here, do this for an individual. The landlord is bucking at, at us. And yeah, like, the, the entry locks is the one sticking point. The one? Okay. Yes. 
Um, and we're, we continue to try to, you know, we're always looking. So mm -hmm. that our our keying system um, is probably one of the most secure physical keying systems that you can get. Nice. Um, the blanks are only available to us this side of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't go into a store and and just make a copy. Make a and we went to the system because. We found out we, there was a provider that retired, and they walked in and had a ring of like 35 keys. Oh, goodness. and said, "Do you want these keys back?" And we're like, "Oh my gosh, people are just making copies of other people's house <laughs> keys." keys. <laughs> right. So Ooh. that is the one pushback. Otherwise, we we really work to say yes. There you go. Yeah. Um, some of the environmental mods we might push back on. Okay. Simply because. You know what they might be proposing doesn't really work. So, in that space, environmental mods providers aren't required to have any kind of architectural or code background type of thing. Um, so sometimes they want to do something that we just know isn't going to be up to code. You can't put a ramp at that short a distance and still have it to code and mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So. Are there any systems in which that the individual is a part of, or is it kind of like we, you look at the the specs of what's going on and you map it out, or can the individual come in and you know have we, a little more input? We prefer that they're there. Okay. Um, we prefer to watch how somebody is going to navigate through their space. Okay. Because that tells us where where are the touch points. Literally, where are the yeah. touch points, um, especially in a bathroom when. <laughs> When we ask them, please step into the shower area, when they brace themselves on a certain part of the wall, piece of tape. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we want to grab bar, nice. right? There's, because there's, and this is one of the hardest thing for me with my architectural background was to, when it comes to our folks, to kind of throw all that out the window. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, when you talk about person center, that's how we want to do our mods. Yeah. The ADA may say that the grab bar needs to be here, mm -hmm. but if that's not where it works for that person, we're going to put it over there. There, right. Right, type of thing. So, yeah. we A lot of the accessible apartment units, you know, they're, they accessible also means a bathtub. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in our brains, accessible means wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> gotcha. um, and, and larger than a 32 by 48 footprint mm -hmm. shower, right? So, you know, that's another thing that when you talk about, you know, finding that right housing out there, um, we're lucky in that our stock has a lot of that accessible five by five roll-in showers. We've got a shower that's actually nine by ten because the person mm -hmm. bays laid out, mm -hmm. um, and there's people that help them. So, so yeah, I love our housing because it is it, it, any any need that might be there. Like we we want to figure it out and let's do it. Yeah, that's cool <laughs> because, uh, like you said, I think there's this impression that there's just this blanket disability, and they're like, yeah, everybody gets the same thing, which is the worst thing you can do. Yeah. It's like. When, when someone buys a home, they want a custom home, you're just not being like, well, we put the counter this high because that's what it should be. Like, <laughs> if they want it this high or that high or this right. dimension, whatever. And then, you know, with the fact that you're allowing people to help you make those decisions is awesome because it's not a blanket. Some people can't walk. Some people can walk totally fine. Disability is not a blanket term, and there's yeah. just so many different levels of what people can do, and it's just... I don't think you find that level of compassion in a lot of places, especially you wouldn't think housing and compassion go in Yeah, there. right? <laughs> well, honestly, it's funny because it kind of should. I mean, when you think about all of the extra um, worldly costs nowadays, our individuals mm -hmm. are not exempt from that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, their grocery bills are going up as well. Right. So, like, even rent for the housing and stuff, like, how do you, do you all keep it Moderate, or is there a way or a formula that you have to help yep. individuals out? So we the the target is thirty percent of your income. Okay. So you know for that affordability component. Now there are some folks in our private market rent subsidy program who, if they want to, because we've got caps there, mm. right? And if they want to live in a place that has all those bells and whistles, then they may pay more than thirty percent, gotcha. but by choice. Mm -hmm. That you know, there's there's an option to find housing, you know. But I mean, kudos to those folks as well because they're going out and getting jobs to pay yes. for that, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. so that's the beautiful thing of you know all that flexibility and the different types of housing that you yeah. can find. It goes back to what we've been talking about: self 
reliance. Um, you know, I think too often we give our individuals an out that we wouldn't even give ourselves at times. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it sounds like you're doing a lot of innovative stuff. You're doing a lot of cool stuff. Is there anything that you're excited about moving forward? I know technology is changing at a rapid pace. The laws are changing at a rapid pace. It's just like everything is 3,000 miles an hour right now. Is there any kind of stuff you're working on that just personally that you're excited about with creative housing? Well, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we, as I mentioned, uh, our the angel architect that is is helping us. Um, you know, we're 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 working on, and he's also helping other people as well. We're working on finding some housing that um, will best support folks who may not want to live with other folks. Gotcha. Um, so there's that whole challenge of. Do I want to live in a house with a couple, three other people? Mm -hmm. Do I want to live by myself? Can I live with a couple, three other people? Um, so if we all had our own way, right, we would want our own place. Mm -hmm. But the affordability, sustainability of that mm -hmm. is not realistic, mm -hmm. um, especially even with the waiver services, right? right? The way you can stretch <laughs> your waiver dollars is if you're sharing services with somebody in the house. Mm -hmm. um, so we're actually working on um, a new design that there'll only be two people in the house, okay. but they'll be they'll have enough of their own space, but it's a small enough footprint that is affordable and, and it's flexible enough that we can slam two together to have a duplex and you can fit them on infill lots which are least expensive, you know, that you can find all that kind of good stuff. So cool. Um, we're, it is, it's very exciting. And he also, as I mentioned, he's got, you know, connections in the developer world. So if we can get our foot in the door in that aspect. So there's, there's a, there are a lot of folks who need housing, want community housing. And the challenge is, is there the right housing for them to be successful and thrive and live yeah. their best lives? Um, you know, that's, I think sometimes people take for granted that, well, you just need a house. Yeah, right. Right? Well, it needs to be the right house, the right location, the right, you know, mm -hmm. neighborhood, the right this, that, and whatnot. You know, are, are, are their community interests close by? Can they go to church on their own? Like, mm -hmm. all that kind of good stuff is always considered when people are looking for housing. Um, the One of the challenges is, we do live in such a person-centered world, right, where all the services are in settings and in manners that are that are specific to what mm -hmm. a person's goals, values, preferences are, right? Um, sometimes we get locked into the, I want to live here in this kind of house with these things, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to say no to everything else, Um and, and that kind of bums me out because people get frustrated that, you know, right. I'm not getting my housing. And it's, well, we all have to compromise, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think those conversations need to happen a little bit more. Yeah. Of I think we could house a lot more folks a lot faster if we focus on, okay, is this location meeting my needs? And, you know, I understand I might not get this and that and whatnot, but when we're looking for that perfect every time, um, it you know, it frustrates the person. Yes. And to that I say, well, we're, the team should be able to have those conversations so that person can make an informed, supported decision and understand why. Right. Maybe I need to live, you know, a zip code over mm -hmm. type of thing. So. Yeah. Well, I think if we all got the houses we want, we'd be in a really different situation <laughs> yeah. right now I, on a global scale. Yeah. <laughs> I really love the HGTV show where they show them the the house that they said that they want, yeah. and it's like, oh yes, perfect, beautiful, beautiful, and their budget is like right. a quarter of a million, yes. but the house costs one point three. <laughs> it's like <laughs> this is what I, everything that you said you wanted. And weird, weird to say to tie this back on. You know, what am I excited about? Any innovations? It's not necessarily necessarily innovations it's the conversations that are starting to happen mm. to the effect of what I was just saying yeah to let's let's stop thinking that we know better or that someone won't understand the impact of these other factors mm -hmm. and let's have those conversations yep. right and so yeah I am seeing those happen a little bit more so to me that's exciting because it's just going to give a lot better feel like I said we've got we have our capacity to serve is just under 2,000 people 
look at Right. And we have vacancies. And the fact that we have vacancies and people are looking, looking, looking for housing is like, come on, well, let's let's figure this out, yeah, right? Let's, let's try um, this uh, different approach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's um, always a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> well, to lighten it up a little bit, I have a next part. Uh, I have three questions for you. Oh, boy. And they come in would you rather scenario. And this part of the show is called Rapid Fire. Oh boy! Okay. So I'm going to ask these three questions. The quicker you answer them, the better it'll be for our viewership or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The first one: Would you rather walk barefoot in a public area or run a race in tall platform shoes? Barefoot. I think I broke her. <laughs> you did break me. They barefoot. both sound terrible. They they really do. Well, <laughs> For, one I will definitely get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> right? The, yeah, the platforms. Yes. <laughs> All right. Would you rather live on a boat on the ocean or live in a house on a desert? Boat. Mm, okay. Would you rather shave your head bald or grow a mustache? Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather grow a mustache. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Me too. And look, you can I'm, make it all well, I'm nice. Already, I'm already thinning in my old age, so, so I want to oh, no. hang on to like that a, hair as long as I can. It looks it looks good to me. I currently <laughs> wanted you both to shave my head bald and grow a mustache. mustache. My, my wife won't let me shave my head. Yeah, I've I'm seen really so many it. cool mustaches after, yeah. well, since the, 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 like this whole facial hair thing has been in the last what three four years has really been coming back i've seen a lot of nifty mustaches well, i think tony and i are slowly trying to like be similar because he yeah. started growing a beard and i want to shave all my hair off <laughs> we're just trying to assimilate and be closer we just want to take each other's photo and just mess yeah, them together. Yeah. <laughs> all right so we've we've asked you every question that we could possibly think of about housing is there anything before we wrap up that you want people to know? I mean, we covered quite a bit in a very short amount of time. Is yeah. there anything you want people to know about creative housing? Um, well, not necessarily about creative housing. I mean, we're you, everyone's got the internet, right? You can you can find us there. I can mm -hmm. say that you know I just want to reaffirm that we love what we do. Yes. Um, but I do want to say that you know everybody is looking for housing, and it's competitive out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so. Everyone should also do a little advocacy, right? The whole move into the community living space was because of families advocating. We've got families. We have self-advocates right now. Um, you know, the resources for developing housing for our group of folks, um, they'll come if we advocate. Yes. So, and it's, you know, the state, you know, every March there's DD Advocacy Day. Talk to your legislators, you know, talk to your housing authorities, talk to your local folks in the city. I mean, anything that can get you goodwill. There's, you know, neighborhood associations. Um, you know, not only, not only does that potentially lead to finding the right person who's going to say, oh, well, we have these programs or these funds available. Mm -hmm. It also creates goodwill. There's still fear out there yes. as to folks that are moving into houses and in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and so the more we can normalize and the more that people know that, hey, these folks are wonderful folks who are going to contribute to their community, Definitely. the better. Um, so just anyone and everyone can keep talking and things will get better. Well, thank you, because we 100% agree. Advocate yes. <laughs> for yourself, advocate for other people, get the info out there and let people know yep. what they can do to help make the world a better place. So uh, if before we go, do you, do you want to let people know where they can find more about Creative Housing? I'm assuming website, website Facebook. Yeah. Creativehousing.org. Um, we do have a Facebook, but we don't really post on it a lot. Um, so the best thing is our, our We'll website. spam it with something. And, yeah, there you, go. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you very much for coming in and explaining this to people. I mean, what we've found over, over you know, over 150 episodes now of the podcast is that a lot of this information, people just don't know that it exists. There's so many resources and there's people like you that are dying to let people use them and be part of them. And they're just like, I didn't know that existed. So yeah. we're, we're hoping that we can, you know, let everybody know more about what's going on out there. And thank you for your time and coming in here today and talk to us. Can I check, shoot yeah. one thing in there? Yeah. So oh, well, because this was just this was focused on creative housing, but there's a lot of other resources out there. So um, I don't know if anyone you've you've interviewed yet spoke about it, but there's a Ohio 811 voucher that DODD is 
you know, a resource for that anyone can sign up for housing voucher wait lists. You know, there's affordable housing websites out there that you can seek affordable housing mm-hmm. that is available to anybody that mm-hmm. can get wait lists. I mean, there's there's a lot of other stuff out there besides creative housing, so I just want to make sure everybody knows. Yeah. Just keep looking. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> THS Remote Supports is clearly focused on improving independent living through dynamic and personalized services. Their systems have been carefully developed and perfected to ensure that everyone receives the best care through the least intrusive means possible. Located in Cincinnati, Ohio, they've spent over 20 years providing in-home supports to individuals with disabilities. If If you or someone you know is looking for a remote service provider, go to THSRSS.com or call 513-882-9088.